Is that better? That should be better. Hopefully that's better. Which means, do we, do we need to start, do we need to start over? It is a lot to start over with, but you know what? I'll jump in and just do a little intro here. Sorry for that, Danielle. Technical difficulties do actually happen. Welcome to the first introductory webisode of Animal Behavior Chat with the wonderful Danielle Beck. I am Neil Hutchins Resto, a.k.a. I'll treat a furrow, here to bring you some wonderful comments, questions, concerns. But in this case, we are specifically going over ethology and animal behavior, care, and behavior counseling. So what are some of the things that ethology covers and what can we do with it in order to better help our lifestyles with our pets, uh, whether they be exotic companions or livestock companions or some of those companions we know oh so well, like furry pussycats and wonderful wolfing dogs. Um... So, Danielle, we were just going over a little bit. I kind of went off on a rampage about Disney and um, talking about, but it was, it was what is actually natural? What is actually natural? You know, I, I like to refer some people to the thing, too, as I wasn't born with a clicker in my hand. I had to learn the skill. I had to read up on the skill. I had to be proficient in the skill. It's not something that just comes naturally. It's something that you have to study and you have to work for and you have to strive to do more. So all care, maintenance, training, everything should always be progressive. You should always be wanting to do more. You should always be wanting to reach out and get some information. So hopefully we can do that with this channel and hopefully some of our guests. Actually, Danielle, you were telling me earlier, you have quite the, quite the lineup heading this way. Um, do you want to release that early and just kind of give some people some snippets? Or do you want to keep it on the down low? Yeah, let's let's talk about um uh, let's talk about your lineup here. Who do you have ready for this channel? I mean, you have quite the subscriber list. So jealous of some of your colleagues, by the way. <laughs> Or wine and chocolate. <laughs> I hope you will so. Let's do it. Let's, let's also go into the fact that it's not just dog training that is unregulated. Yeah, there's, it's all industry professions, you know, all are, are extremely, extremely, um, Can, can we, can we touch on science? I, I want to, I, yeah, I want to touch on a, a, a definition of science. So as we progress in your channel, when we refer to science saying, oh, science suggests this or science proves this or science says this. No, we're actually talking about people who have conducted a research project who it's now being peer reviewed. So a lot of times there's still information in play. There's still professionals that are going to disagree. A fun one, does your dog 
like a hug. You know, I just commented on this on your on your on your page today only because it's really funny because I'm doing a video about it right now because it's the number one question I'm being asked is science proves that I can't hug my dog. No. Science didn't prove that you can't hug your dog. Science proved stress signals and indicators to us to watch out for when conducting these types of engagement with our pets. Understanding that not all dogs are going to want hugs. That doesn't mean all dogs hate hugs. It just means some dogs aren't going to appreciate it as much. So when we refer to science, note that we're referring to something where very highly educated referenced people are looking for, ideally, hopefully, are looking for solutions or answers to, I don't want to say tired questions, but the questions that everyone wants answered. Or hopefully we can find answers for them. Same thing in vaccine, you know, research and, and things like that. Just so happens that ours is on a psychology platform and not really on a... Well, unless we get into some neuroscience, because I, I know we'll probably touch on some neuroscience. <gasps> yes! Like, you totally got, like, wacky, wailing, arm, flailing, inflatable tube man right there. That is so exciting. I love neuroscience. Like, it is, I will, oh, yeah, that's going to be so much fun. So, Danielle, who do you have coming on? Uh, uh, so. Yeah, I'm not getting your audio. Um, I, okay, that bark just came through really well. So I'm hoping... I got a bark there in the background. Was that Holly? Danielle? Hello? Danielle. Oh, there you are. We lost you. We we heard a we heard a bark from like Holly, I think, and then all of a sudden you went blank. Was it Holly? Okay. So, um, do you wanna do you wanna go over that? Who do you have for pets? What are what are your pets' names? Okay, hold on. Spell it. Yeah. See so you. You can. There you go. Yeah, I, I saw your video. He wasn't he wasn't a fan of those. Wow, 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 wow. Right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um so you keep breaking up. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. So I'm going to hopefully this one fixes it. Um, we'll have to, we'll have to, you know, check with the YouTubers here. Um, but that's the fun part about your introductory episode is, well, this is where we work out all the kinks. <laughs> Only me. Um, <laughs> hashtag geeky dog trainer. <laughs> I know, right? That's the fun part, too, is I can always, uh, I'll make sure that I have the audio available for release, that it will be an MP4. It is going to be available on positive petadvice.org. If you want to go check out all of Lisa G. White's chat times, those will all be there. All of our fabulous Danielle Beck 
episodes will be there and all of the stuff coming from Dr. Question and Answers. I'm so happy to have all of you guys doing this and, and working hard uh, for your profession and, and being those names in a household that people can really grow to love, understand, and take the information for what it is for the gratification, for the glorification, for the understanding, and for the progress to them in their lives. Because not only does a positive pet and a positive companion animal welfare environment need to happen, a positive influence needs to happen to everyone. Everyone needs to understand that we too are a species and we too have to think positively and we too have to train ourselves sometimes. Think of some of the best athletes. They have to train themselves. They have to educate themselves and some of the greatest minds in science or other industries they've had to train and educate and, and be proficient to become fluent. So it's, it's really important that overall we have a nice um, we have a nice audience and, and we have some great presenters. And I honestly need to thank you oh so much, Danielle, for doing this um, and for helping out positive pet advice in, in all the ways in all the ways that you do. Um, so without further ado, I would like to end this just with a little bit of you explaining, you know, some of the people you have lined up. Let's take let's take like five minutes. Um, just so you know we are running at 22 minutes. <laughs> Correct. I hear you on that one. <laughs> we we totally should. Wait, are you wearing are you wearing a Batman shirt? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to sound like PewDiePie here, but, um, you know, I, I definitely just had to scream there for a minute. <laughs> I'm not going to go banging on the table, though. Um, mm-hmm. Perfect. I I'm one hundred percent I am one hundred percent with you on that. Let's you know, we're gonna roll in some interactions, answer some questions, play some games. Um, you know, I'll ask you different questions, which I already did this one for Dr. Q. I have to do Lisa. I'll do it for you now. If you could give me one breed out of the American Kennel Clubs, you know, what are the seven, seven, seven groups? I know, horrible. But if you follow their groups, uh, what are some of your favorite dog breeds? So from the from the working group, what would be your favorite? No, oh, well, that's kind of yeah. <laughs> uh, with your sport, oh yeah, the Nordic breeds are. A lot of my friends like to say training a northern breed is like training a cat. Um, <laughs> they can be trained, but you have to you have to be one step ahead of the game. I, this is where I really say uh, you need to put the attention on a schedule because you're not going to be able to just do one training session for 20 minutes and repeat the same thing. It's not going to happen. So um, really, this is where we could say that training schedules are important in maintenance 
as well as in, you know, education in general. Um, yay! How tos are so much fun. Uh, who? What's your well? Your favorite sporting breed is probably gonna be Labrador, right? Yeah, that's your gun dogs. Oh, Tollers. Tollers is a good one. It's actually really funny. That's, this year is the first time I've ever had a service dog application come in for a, a, a Toller. Yeah, this is, this is the first year someone's requested a Toller. So, uh, what was that? Oh, <laughs> what would be, what would be your favorite terrier? I was I was assuming you would go Patterdale being in the UK. Um I've had my fair share of run-ins with Patterdales. I I love Patterdales. Patterdales actually are one of my defining terrier breeds that I think can only be matched by the Border Terrier or the Cilium Terrier. Um, only because I really enjoy the rich heritage that goes along with it as well. Um, so that's, you know, that, that plays, that plays a role. Okay. What's your favorite toy breed of all time? I know, I know you're, I know you're a big dog girl. What's your favorite toy breed? Yes. Yes. The butterfly dog. Palms are fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> I find it very interesting too that a lot of times people automatically assume that because it's a small dog you have to train it a different way than a big dog or a different way than a working dog or, or anything like that and, and I love to point out the fact that if you look at the most successful small breeds or the competitors with small breeds, they actually are doing almost the exact same thing that a lot of people are doing with their big working breeds. It was actually really funny. I watched a video. It was a French bulldog doing IPO. Uh, for, for those of you that don't know, IPO uh, is a protection and obedience uh, sport. Uh, but the actual acronym is in German. I, I don't even know what it is we would have to probably get like buzz on here and do a <laughs> and do an episode on and do an episode uh, you and him can do an ipo episode how's how's that sound yeah i really love you know who i i need to do a tracking episode with eileen henley uh because her and i really like to play and and scent work and tracking and things um uh, there's actually a few other ones that would be that would be fun. Who else were you? Uh, who else were you exploring for interviews? I know you had brought up a couple.
Right. My other favorite. Good. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, hashtag, hashtag geeky dog trainer. Yeah, or you can hit me up, hashtag treat fairy, um, and we'll, we'll get you on, we'll get you on the show um, because, well, we want to talk to you. We want to hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lost you. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Zero clicks, bad now. <laughs> yes. Can we do boundary frustration, please? Oh, good. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing, too, is just because you're applying it in a positive and effective way doesn't mean it's actually being translated in a positive, effective way. So it's, it's, it's a, I like to say, I like to say modern handlers are technicians. They need to be able to read the animal and read the environment. Uh, the ultimate ism that comes to mind, this is one of Neil's isms, is we... We listen with our eyes. We need to start listening with our eyes. It's the only way to become an effective technician or to become an effective trainer is to understand the theory, understand the relation, understand the relationship with the animal and making sure that the communication is being received positively and effectively. Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
Right. <laughs> right. Yes, making the training session fun. Well, Danielle, I'm going to go ahead and close you out. Um, I'm going to thank you for coming on and doing this. I'm loving this series. I'm, I'm loving this idea. Um, this introductory pilot, you know, we had some technical issues with it. Hopefully the recording actually came out better than the stream did. So we'll go ahead and publish that here soon. And the audio will be available as well. So go ahead and grab those from whatever resources you feel like using. You can feel free to subscribe to Danielle's channel. Uh, you can also hit me up at the treat fairy hashtag positive pet advice to go ahead and answer any of those uh, questions you might be having or to join the discussion about this video because there will actually be some uh, comments and discussions available um, as well as whoever our guests are that are coming in they'll be available to answer some questions in the group as well um oh yay questions Right. I have to agree with that, Danielle. Um, I mean, I know, I know it's not my show, but um, I would definitely have to say, because I'm not in the UK, I'm here in the US. However, one of the biggest problem behaviors we have here is is probably aggression um and i would i would be comfortable saying a majority of aggression happens because of bad maintenance because of bad development because of bad socialization now that's not to say that you can't get something that already has a problem and work with it fix it curb it. However, you're still going to have that small, minute inkling. It's almost like a marker in your DNA. It's, it's called an imprint. And we're still going to have these imprints. There's still going to be a section of thin ice that we have to tread lightly on. But I'll definitely say that aggression is the biggest factor that we face here in the U.S. And ultimately, I believe it's being handled completely wrong, and it's actually causing the aggression cases.